On today's episode, five things every photographer ought to have in their camera bag. There's only one thing that we love more than eating food with chopsticks, and that's photography. You didn't think I could fit that stand in my bag. I, I, I'm amazed what you could fit into your bag these it's, days. It's, it's this incredible. little bag contains so much. But hey, today we are talking about the five things that every, well, or maybe, maybe seven, seven or eight, eight or, things that every photographer should have in their bag every time they go out for a shoot. Exactly. But I think today you're going to find out it's not things that you would have thought that we were going to tell you. We're not going to tell you what lens to put in there, what kind of camera you should have. But there are things that a lot of times we just don't think you about. You don't think about, but man, they come in handy all the time. It is. So we've got our grab bag today of goodies so to go through. How about so. this? You grab something in there. Right. If it's something I put in, I'll talk about it. If it's something you put Deal. in, you talk about it. So Deal. in no particular so, order. We're not even looking today. It's just going to grab in there and see what it is. All right. I have no clue. So, I know what that is. So you know what this yes. is? So these things here, Let me see and I bought these on Amazon. And what these are is these are little Velcro strips. But here's the cool thing about them. Feel how smooth these are, right? Smooth. I can't feel yeah. the little what do you call them, claws, right, in the Velcro. The, the hook. But these things stick. They're hook and loop. Like, man, like, I I cannot, <laughs> I cannot pull this thing apart. I think I gave myself a hernia. <laughs> oh, you must be a lot stronger. Yeah, that's right. I just barely put it on there, but. No, but, these are great so, for So cords. what's cool about these, yeah, so all my cords, my straps, and all kinds of different stuff, even, you know, tying something onto a, a light stand, I've done that. Okay. You just hook them around. Great things. And these are like four bucks for a roll of a hundred of them. And you can put Amazon. two of them, you can do like zip ties, right? You can yep. put two or three together if you need it to be bigger, if you needed to put like a gel or something yeah. on a flash. So these little these little uh, Velcro strippy dingies, I don't know what you even call them. We'll, yeah. we'll figure out what they're called and put that on the notes below. But That's right. uh, this is something that has actually saved me quite a bit of hassle yeah. from trying to find a piece not of Not only stuff. hassle, but I like them because it just organizes my bag. Yep. By the end of a shoot, I have this like cluster, it looks like a bird's nest yeah. of cords, so. Good. So that's, that's number one, reach in the one. bag. Okay. Grab bag, I'm not even gonna look. What are you gonna grab, what are you gonna grab? Okay. Uh, oh, I, there's two of the same, and I know what these are too. Oh, yes, that's you. Right here. These little clips. Earrings. Have, yeah. Woo, they, they go with me everywhere. I actually, you can buy these in a package. You go down to your local hardware store. You can buy them like a package of 15 for like 10 bucks. But you really should get ones that actually look a little bit better than going to a discount Strong. place so because they will, they will break. Right. If you buy a good brand you know, version of these things, they'll last forever. But why do I need these things? There are so often that I'm shooting you know, a, a bride or something, and maybe there's a little piece of fabric that's not staying back where we want it to stay. You can actually clip this and pull that fabric over. Yeah. I, I've used these, just like you said, to, to clip things, to light stands, of course. All kinds of stuff. Just all kinds, there's always reasons to. I use these on my backdrops a lot. So like the, the rolls of paper, you know, yeah. that you guys have, if, you, if you're doing a kind of studio, my, studio shooting, they the paper break. Right on, yeah, <laughs> you put that on there the and they, they won't but go they, anywhere. I just, I can tell, they clip. Pretty dug on. They do. Pretty, they do. Pretty you can buy the ones that are all that are all metal, which yeah. I have, but boy, it takes like you know three men and two little boys to open so, those things up. So. Great number two. Number two is every bag, at least two of them. Yeah, a few of these Pop clips them in there. ought to be in there. All right, I'm reaching in. Ooh, wet well, wipes. You know these are wet wipes. So when you're eating ribs, yes, and you've been or chicken or chicken, and you need to do photography, you always have clean hands, and that's important in today's uh, photography world. No, what these things are. So these are actually made by Zeiss, you know, famous maker of some best of the best glass in the world, in the world yeah. right? But these are lens cleaning wipes. You can get these in the optical department where they sell this, the glasses at Walmart. They're it blew four, me away when you told me $4 that Zeiss a box at, at Walmart yep. for a hundred of these things. And they are perfectly yeah. safe to wipe down your camera, your lens, right? Everything. Because they're for glasses. And even if you take off the lens cap, it usually works better, but you know. Cleaning that and it oh, doesn't yeah. leave any residue behind. And what I also use these for a lot because I get this nose smudge on the back of my camera. I never do. I know because you've got a perfectly clean nose. It but is. look at that. I'm, I'm heading there so, yeah. tomorrow. I'm going to go pick up a pack of look at that. four bucks for a hundred yeah. of those. And then you can just give a nice little wipey down. That you is, can see that's, that's pretty dirty. But yeah, definitely grab these. These things are the best little wipies that I've used. One of the nice things is, is they don't, they're not an alcohol-based product where they end up drying out. Okay, rubber all the rubber and all and that stuff. stuff. Okay. So good. Uh, that that is 
always have a bunch of these with me, but. All right, so that's number three. What else you got? Reaching in. Oh. Hey, this is not mine. No, that's mine. But I'm gonna let you talk about this. This is so, one that you put in there. That yeah, so this thing here, and, and a lot of you guys I know have one, this really doesn't have to do with my camera, but it has to do with me operating in the field. This is my RAV power, um, power adapter. So this thing has 1,800 or 18,000 miles of power. It's a wow. biggie, yeah, right? Yeah, huge. And this will recharge my phone four different times. It'll recharge my iPad. Um, but this has been a lifesaver too. You can actually charge two different, it's got a fast charger yeah. and a slower charger. Yeah, in this day and age, our phone is our lifeline when yeah. we're out places. So, so we're out shooting video a lot and video just sucks up your phone power like crazy. I mean, we were just amazed at how fast that yeah. sucks it up. But this thing will recharge my phone on the fly. Um, four different times. Definitely, if you're thing. doing any kind of travel photography, have to have one. These things, this is a biggie, but you can get these that are almost the size of like a thumb drive now. They're yeah. really small. I, w I would stick with finding a good brand one because I own like four of those cheap ones. They last like two different times to do it. And then when you really need them, they don't work. Rad Power, great, great brand. Okay. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people endorse these are just saying we don't, we're not endorsed by them, but just a great, uh, exactly. great company. Awesome. What do you got? All right. So I'm gonna reach in again. Oh, right here. There it is. What is this? This is, let's see if it'll get right into the lens there. Perfect. This sure is everybody's a really flashlight, exactly. <laughs> really exciting, but. Ooh, a flashlight, that's Ooh. special. So Push you know, the why? button and it goes on. Push Be the button and it goes on. I know everybody's saying like, no. big deal, why? Now, there's, my phone has a flashlight. There are two main reasons why I carry a flashlight. The first reason is finding stuff in my bag. Yep. At nighttime, there's a lot of times I gotta look in there and see what I got left in there, what I'm trying to find, but. One of the other big reasons is I will use this a lot of times at, in the evening time. I can shine this on my subject so I can grab a focus because there's a lot of times that my focus illuminator that actually helps me grab focus, it's still too dark to even grab a focus, but right here, this will do it. Yep. I've even in a pinch just taken portraits with it. As, it works. Just being creative These LED and fun. flashlights actually work really they well. They do. They don't cast so, a lot of color. Well, so right, let's so see what we got next. Have. How many have we, it's, let's not even keep count yet. You, uh, you might want to use some of this. Now, I, I did a blog post years ago about this. It's talking about the, uh, you know, under $5, how you could change your photography. Yeah. And that just comes with, over the years that we've taught workshops, I've had over 8,000 people come through the workshops. And you know how many times I've wished that the people in the workshops chewed gum? Yeah, got to right there. A more, so it's better endorsement. Ooh, there you go. There we go. So that you fresh, can see that right day. there. Carry gum. You know what happens? We get really busy behind our camera. Sometimes we don't talk, you get that dry mouth. If you're talking to me and I'm smelling your breath, I can't even imagine what your clients are thinking. And there's so many times we gotta get in close to tell them how we want them to stand. Yep. Gum, All right. that's a must. Here it is. What is it? It's a black square, a black square of nothing. No, it's a black square of gaff tape. Of gaff tape. So what I've done, rather than carrying around my, my big roll of gaff tape, I carry yep. around, just I wrapped it around itself, this little flat square can even fit in your pocket. This is so useful. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've actually had to hem up someone's pants or maybe tuck in the back of the dress, something, gaff tape works great, just using it on lights, whatever it might be, yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of the it's magic. It's gaff thing. tape, just remember it's gaffer's tape, yep. it is not duct tape. Duct it tape, not, stay away duct from tape. it. You don't use duct it tape. Leaves residue it. everywhere, this won't, won't this, leave residue. And just carry it like that, weighs nothing. All, All right. right, what else we got in here? That's I think we're down to, oh, the last All item. Right. And this is kind of goes with the gum. Carry chapstick, bliss text, whatever it is. Your, your lips are looking a little parched. They are. Now, these are those things that can ruin a photo shoot. Yep. Especially, we're not just always talking about doing portrait work. You're out somewhere in the desert shooting pictures. This could ruin your trip having chapped lips. Yep. Once you start licking your lips and they get dry, all bets are off, man. You're By the end of the day, you're wishing you weren't there. So, so we got a kind of a little uh, buffet of so products here. So there's five things. Five, six, we'll see seven, one, two, three, eight, four, right. five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay, eight things that every photographer. But fill your bag with these. It's the kind of things you don't think about, but I guarantee you, using them will change your life in photography. It was. Hey, what we want you to do is down below in the in the comment section, put the things that we forgot that you think that we ought to be carrying each day in our bag. Share them with others. Fortunate questions. All right, we got some fortunate questions. Ooh, hopefully, hopefully it's a fortunate hand question. Hand it over Look, to me. Good, I am getting it at fortune cookie passing. Uh, exactly. Let's see if I can open this up here. All right, the question is, first question is, is it gonna be upside down or It's not? the right way. I actually kind of cheated and looked at it there, and so. What do we got? All right. <laughs> what do we got, you need glasses? Yeah, I need, my, need my reading glasses. So this is from Jennifer from Utah. 
Hi, Jennifer. State, so Thanks Utah. Hi, question. Utah. Glad we're glad well, you're here. I shouldn't thank you for the question until yeah. we hear the question. Yeah, it says right here, it says, I see photographers using watermarks on their images. Is that something I should be using? I have pretty song, strong song. I have pretty song stealing. <laughs> Pretty strong feelings about that one. Do you have strong feelings about that I one? I do have extremely strong feelings. And I this is always one where I hate to hurt people's feelings over. So feelings. you go ahead and start and then I'll I'll wrap it up and hurt everyone's feelings. Don't I you? hate watermark. Yay, so do I. Uh, because we agree. it makes no difference. No. Right? And a couple things. First thing is if someone's gonna steal your picture, they're gonna steal your picture. And you know what? None of us are gonna be paid for those pictures anyways. Yep. It doesn't matter. And when you're just taking pictures of your family and you're watermarking them, what for? <laughs> it's just crazy. Exactly. Me. My feeling is if you're afraid of your picture being taken and used for something else, then don't put it on the internet. It's kind of, you know, I don't wanna say it's fair game once it's out there, because it's not fair game. And, and we're not saying, you know, people should be using we're, yeah, your we're not images. copyright violation. Exactly, so we're not at all. We're just saying, as a photographer, is it helpful for you? I will say, as much as I'm opposed, you know what I really like? And again, we're not, we're not uh, sponsored by these guys at all. I don't even know the name of the company. There's a company out there that makes signatures for photographers, that they do these really cool, it just keeps popping on my Facebook. And you know how many times I've said, Wow, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. But I don't mind seeing that. I don't mind when I see somebody's name real small on something. But when you're watermarking with these big designs, it makes you look very amateurish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, stay, yeah, I, stay I just, classy. Stay classy, man. Yeah. I just don't like it. I just think it's it's pretty weak. But yeah. that's our personal opinion. I know that's mine, and I'm glad you agreed with me because I'm always right. But <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I just I just don't like it. I think it's, we'd love to hear from you if there's if you think that there's a, a great me. reason. I've heard a lot of people go. I just don't want anybody stealing my images. Well, they were going to steal. Sell me that. They're not going to steal your images. No. They're going to steal mine. Sell me They're on that steal idea yours. of why why you yeah. should put a watermark. But you know it. Yeah. If you're going to do it, stay small, stay classy. Um, and even today, I doubt you're getting work because someone saw your with Photoshop and content aware. <laughs> I, can, I can override your little watermark without yeah. any problem. Yeah, in yeah. most cases. So unless you plaster it across someone's face, but right. that was a very good Jennifer, question. Jennifer, that's actually an awesome question. I'm glad you asked it because we're not opinionated at all <laughs> on <laughs> that <laughs> issue. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so there you have it. That was our. If you have a question for us, go ahead and submit it. You will find it both. You can submit it here on YouTube or you can go to our Facebook page, which is listed below or also our website. Send us your questions. We'd love to read them on the show. That's right. Like talking raw. Talking raw. All right. Today's fabulous sushi is hamachi. Ooh, That's right. Yellow which tail. Which is yellowtail tuna. tuna. And I'm sorry. There's two pieces here. You will get a piece, but I want you to do... A little I'll, bit of raw I'll talk put these first down. before we're doing What are we talking about today? Today we're going to be talking about the proper or a better way of using the clone stamp or the clone tool, whatever you want to call it. You hit S on your keyboard inside of Photoshop and you're going to come up with your clone stamp tool. Now, here's what I talk about when I say doing it the right way. Right. It's not so much the right way. I think this is a better way. I think... I say it's the right way. Well, I want to find out if I'm doing it the right so, way. Or wrong way. So, number one, here's what I'm seeing what people are doing is they are grabbing their clone stamp tool, and we're not going to worry about doing this really well. They hold down their Alt key yep. or their Option key on a Mac, okay. and they're going to select an area that they want to take the good stuff from to paint over the bad, and they say, you know what, let's get rid of the, the downspout in this image. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that how we've always That's done exactly it? That's exactly how I do it. Well, let's undo that right now. And I'll actually have to back up a couple of steps to where we began. We Here's where I say that's the wrong way to do it. There, and there's a couple of reasons why. Every time we work in Photoshop, we want to work in layers. Remember, layers are just clear sheets of plastic. Your artwork's on a new sheet of plastic. Yep. So the very first thing that I am going to want to do anytime I use the clone stamp is I'm going to put a new layer down. So I have this clear sheet that's working over the top. I actually have to set my clone stamp up here on the status bar where it says current layer. I need to say current and below. Don't say all layers. Say current layer and below. So it says, I want you to sample what's on here, which is nothing and I want you to and sample everything that's below. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, and I'm gonna go ahead, and, and it's not gonna look any different. All right, so it looks the same. Looks the same. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna quickly 
get rid of that, not worry about doing a great job. I would I would worry about how things are cloning there. I just want to show good. you why. Here's the reason why. Because here's what would happen. We clone things. Have you ever printed something and went, oh no. You can see the brush mark on somebody's mm. shoulder where you tried to clone something out or you tried to erase the person next to them. We call that the divorce tool where you're trying to <laughs> get the other yeah. person out of there. Well, here's what would happen. I would send this to the printer and the printer would call me up and say, uh, Mark, you really want me to print this? And I'm going, why not? And he goes, well, pull that picture up and let's take a look at the, her knee. And I'd zoom into her knee and he'd go, this girl has superpowers. Look at her knee can turn invisible. She just hasn't harnessed the whole ability to turn herself completely invisible. And I go, oh, I cloned over her knee. If I had done that on its own layer, guess what? I'm kind of stuck. I've saved this. I've sent it off to the printer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to either have to start again. I'm going to have to cut the knee out of another picture and bring it in and try okay. to fix it. I'm going to be here all day. So what can but we do? I put it on its own layer. So look at this. I can turn this layer on and off because, you know, maybe I show this to a client and the client goes, oh, we're a downspout company. Why did you take that downspout out? And I could just go, you mean that downspout? And they go, oh, good. And I'm saving myself a bunch of work. But the majority of the time, it's this. All I now have to do is put a mask on that particular layer. I have a white mask, so I'm gonna use a black brush. Anywhere I paint with black, I'm gonna bring that knee back. Mm. So I just save myself, look at that, a ton of grief. I, the printer could tell me there's a problem, I can fix it, I can say, give me five minutes and I'll send it back over. So that is your quick tip of the day. Anytime you work with the clone stamp, you need to be doing it on its own layer. Yes. I've been doing it wrong. You've been doing it wrong. You're gonna do it the right way now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can I have some hamachi now? Eat some hamachi. Okay. You did it the wrong way though, because you have to have some of this beautiful uh, ginger. You know, this ginger right here. There we go. Mm. So why don't you give me some food for thought? <laughs> exactly, because you have a very full mouth. So hey, food for thought for today. I think the food for thought is what? What do I think? I'm trying to think of my food for thought. We talked about a lot of different stuff, but it's really, make sure that you have those things in your camera bag. I mean, we we're kind of goofing around with them today, but honestly, those are things that we have in our camera bag. And yes. I, haven't, I haven't seen a lot of photographers carry around that stuff. You know, there's another thing that I thought of that's actually in my, it's not in my carry camera bag, but it's in my car camera bag of supplies is a sewing kit with a needle, mm -hmm. a pair of scissors, and thread. Uh, there has been times that we've had to actually hem pants, rip something that's ripped, we've had to hem that on the fly. Especially yeah. if you're a wedding photographer, carry a sewing kit. It's funny you say that because we had a whole show we talked about are you a lazy photographer? Mm -hmm. Today, every time I look down, I'm seeing right here on you the button on thread. my shirt, I have one little thread here. As a photographer, we're lazy and we would say, don't worry about it, I'll fix I'll it fix in Photoshop. Photos. How much easier would it be to carry a little pair of scissors and clip off yep. that? So that's, I think that's my final thought or food for thought for yep. today is just, you know, carry the stuff and, and think out of the box. It's not just about yep. camera gear. See, and that was a great tip. That's why down below, I want you guys to tell us the things that we're missing. Because I love learning from, from those of you, you out there. Yeah. <laughs> I can't talk. That, that was so good. It was good stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyways, did you, did you have any other final thoughts? I mean, that's kind of my final thought for today. But No, I think it's just, again, thinking out of the box, making sure that you're prepared. And not just prepared with a battery that's filled and a clean uh, SD card, but be prepared of what the elements are going to bring you. In the wintertime, that might mean... I leave a jacket in my trunk all winter long. I have a windbreaker that just stays yep, in there and a beanie. I'm a bald guy, and there's one thing that can ruin a day of shooting, and that's being out in the cold with or a bald head. Or in the head. sun with bald head, too. Or being so. in the sun. So. Hey, so that is our show for today. We, I got to tell you, we have a blast doing this, and hopefully you have a blast watching us as well. We really appreciate you spending a few moments with us each week. But go ahead and subscribe. The, the link is below to our channel. Each week we do... These shows, we also have our small bites and then starting some gear reviews coming up shortly too as well. But go ahead and join us next week. Please like, please like, subscribe, and comment. That, that yellowtail just got my tongue. It is. And get out and have some sushi. That's it. All right, have a great week.